Hello, my name is Pastor Mike Salmon from Harvest Christian Fellowship. I want to talk to you a little bit about today about a documentary I was watching yesterday. It was called The Great Feast, and it was about a documentary about uh, the sea and the ocean, shoals and things like that. And as I was watching the documentary, I observed uh, humpback whales. And on the humpback whales, I saw these yellow, crusty looking things. And the humpback whale had all kinds of other types of things on. And I asked my wife, I said, I wonder what that is. And she, after looking it up, she says, oh, those are barnacles. They hang on to the whale. Uh, barn uh, the whale also has whale lice and other types of hitchhikers that hang on to them as they travel throughout the sea, eating, you know, leftovers that the whales have, uh, you know, either ate and just kind of left behind, or they just kind of groomed the whale. I started thinking about that. Well, this morning during devotions, I thought about humanity, and I thought about what the scripture says in Romans 3.23. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Um, since we've sinned, we are imperfect. Humanity is imperfect in itself. We have, in our sense, in our life, as we've crossed the sea of this life, have maybe barnacles on us that we have that have integrated into our life. They kind of clung in there and things like that. When we came to Christ, maybe a lot of barnacles fell off. There's all these things that just kind of fall off. But there are some of us who have certain barnacles still on. We struggle to take them off, and some need to be scraped off, some need to be pulled off, some just fall off in time uh, that happens in maturity. As we grow older, we come to realize certain things and they just fall off. A lot of the things that we have struggled when we were in our 20s, maybe you're in your 20s or 15s or whatever, whatever you are, you, you may struggle earlier as you grow older. Uh, the things that you struggled when you were younger aren't there anymore, but these barnacles, they fall off. Um, but we need, sometimes we're called to help each other, remove those barnacles, take those things. Jesus says, uh, first of all, take before you take the speck out of your brother's eye, how can you take the speck out of your brother's eye if you have a plank in your own eye? First take the plank out of your own eye, then you will be able to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So we are called, in a sense, to remove the plank from our eye through Christ, allow God to wash us so that we can be able to help our brothers remove the speck out of their own eyes, remove that barnacles out of their body and out of their life. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons are, are, of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. And if I were to even use the change that word, strongholds, to mean barnacles, to pulling off of the barnacles, to pull these sin things that hang on to us okay it says casting down imaginations and every high thing that is exalts itself against the knowledge of God again this is 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 through 5 it says casting down imaginations uh, as believers in Jesus Christ we are not immune to thoughts and imaginations that may enter our heart or our mind whether they are uh, for example, uh, today, in this time, the uh, big thing is same-sex marriage or same-sex homosexuality. People have uh, same-sex thoughts, uh, homosexual tendencies. They may have other sexual tendencies, uh, whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication. All these thoughts and imaginations that come to a person's mind, even thoughts of getting drunk, you know, I want to get drunk, or... These things have, these imaginations to come into our mind, they have to be cast out. We need to remove them out of our mind and out of our heart and bring them before God. And then it says, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Because there's all these thoughts that try to stop us from doing the things God calls us to do. So if you want to know whether a thought is good or not, ask yourself, is it from God? And is these thoughts according to God's word? Then it says, and bring every captivity thought every captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and what does that mean um, the greatest illustration is found in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus was confronted by the devil and was was tempted the Bible says uh, the devil said change this stone into bread because you're hungry Jesus replied it is written man shall not live by bread alone so what did Jesus do when when the enemy brought 
these thoughts and these temptations or these trials to Christ, he replied them back using the word of God. For example, maybe you get these temptations and these thoughts, I want to get drunk. Instead of just saying, ah, no, no, I'm not thinking about that. I'm not thinking about that. Rather, bring them to Christ and say, thou shalt not be drunk with one, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you're using the word of God. If you uh, get thoughts of fornication, fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. You bring them, thou shalt, the Lord fulfills, the Lord meets my needs. Um, so you're bringing the thoughts that come in your head and you're bringing them to Christ removing the thoughts out of your head and filling them with words of life it takes it takes a process it's not something that happens overnight these things but it takes an intentional intentional life to live for God to actually think in your mind I'm going to avoid any thoughts or ideas or any type of imagery that takes me away from God and I'm gonna focus on God this takes time it takes discipline but you know what? There's nothing impossible with God. That is the greatest thing that we have, is we have the hope that God gives to us, that God gives us uh, the strength. And listen to this, and I conclude with saying, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That's the attitude we have to take against sin, whether it's homosexual tendencies that maybe some people may be having, whether it is fornicating, whether it's drunkenness, whether it's drugs, whatever it is, we cannot say that we are drunkards, we cannot confess of what we are, but rather who Christ is, bringing these thoughts in and casting them out and bringing new thoughts and subjecting them to Christ, allowing Christ to fill our mind. And in doing so, we find that the barnacles will no longer attach to us. And any barnacle that tries to attach to us as we go through the sea of life will fall off. That's an awesome God. And he gives you through the power through the Holy Spirit. I pray God bless you. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father God, if there's any listening God who may be having struggles, Lord, that you give them the ability and the discipline to come to you and overcome their temptations or trials by putting your word first, by filling their mind with goodness, by removing any thoughts of evilness out of their head. Father, no matter how powerful they may be, no matter how how often they may come, give them the strength, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my name is Pastor Mike Salmon. I pray this blesses you. If you want more, you can go to www.hcfaz.org. In Jesus' name.